Hello, I have uh, found my Commodore 64 and it has been in the attic for a while actually it's many years so uh, and, uh, I have cleaned it up I should uh, shall show you some pictures of it before I cleaned it so um, uh, yeah let me show you inside it's pretty clean you can see in the pictures that uh, <laughs> it was well very dusty <coughs> And, uh, but it's what's in very good condition. No, uh, you can see here no corrosion. Uh, actually, there was some corrosion down here. I can show you. Well, it doesn't look like a leak actually. But, um, I can show you with my microscope. Now you can see down here there's a capacitor. And uh, there doesn't seem to be any leak, but if you see in the middle of the picture here, seems to be uh, a dimple. So, yeah. See, so, yeah, this looks like there's been something there. And uh, here, you can see exposed copper underneath the solder mask. Okay, well. These capsters look okay though. Yeah, um, there's no leakage. But uh, they are almost 30 years old though. The first time I tried it yesterday, it didn't turn on. Well, actually, you can see a black screen. Waited and waited, turn it off, turn on, nothing. And when I touched this uh, ground plane here, it I got the Commodore basic screen, so yeah, I don't know why. Maybe it's some uh, ripple from the transformer because uh, when the capacitors are uh, uh, not working properly or at spec anymore, uh, maybe you get a lot of ripple in on the power supply here. Okay, so what I was supposed to show you today was um, this um, RF board here. Uh, usually this uh, comes with a um, shield on top and uh, I have taken it off many years ago, I don't know where it is anymore and when I was a kid I wanted to try and improve things and I didn't know how things worked so I started uh, unscrewing these um, variable capacitors so and I broke the ferrite uh, thingy inside there <laughs> So uh, it's not uh, working anymore. So uh, what I want to show you today is uh, a way you can modify this uh, board to um, uh, use this connector. It's a uh, composite. Let me show you. Here. <coughs> this is the RF connector and this is the video connector. And the Anyway, but I want to use this because it's of, uh, this is the right type. So, what we want to do here is to cut away the RF signal. Then you see the, the plug is here, uh, the connector, and uh, it's solder here. So, what you do is you, you click or you unsolder. Right, so let's put that on. Uh, Resistance ohms meter. Yeah, so what we want to do now is that we want to find if you look on the screen now, you will see uh, the pinout for the video connector, uh, and um, you will see that uh, one of the pins is the composite signal. So, what we want to do now is we want to move the composite signals from there to here. But actually, there's a nice thing about uh, these things that are here. I already pulled away some plastic here. It's just uh, take the calipers and pull them up. Okay? So what we want to do, we want to find a pin here that has the composite signals. What we do, we put uh, the probe on the composite signal down here. And we search for it. 
Okay, so what we want is uh, like uh, below one ohm, but it's not this one, right? No. So no. Right, this must be it. This is a dead short, isn't it? So this is the composite signal. So what we can do, we wire, uh, we put a wire from here to here. Let's do that now. <coughs> so there we have tin on that pair, and this um, connector already already has solder on it, but. We can tin it, put some tin on it and uh, make it clean though. Oh. Right, let's get the cable in there. Right, here I have prepared a cable though. This uh, cable here is a uh, single core. It's the ones that are used in, um, uh, what do you call it, breadboards, uh, uh, jumpo cables. So, uh, and the nice thing about that is um, it won't flop around. <laughs> okay, let's see. I don't get my head in the way here. Uh, so, uh, actually, this part is very easy to open. So, yeah. And if you have. Uh, okay, so the trick here, if you're not used to soldering, see, so I have to heat both uh, the pin and the cable at the same time. And you have to keep it very still such that um, it will um, solidify the tin will solidify and uh, it won't move while it uh, cools down such that it will create a good bond or else you can get a cold joint um, the AV connector is called isn't it? No? it's a composite signal anyway See. Okay, it's difficult to do this under camera. Um, okay, so this takes a bit more time because it's more mass, and you have to watch out because you you can get burn in your fingers if you because this is a single core wire. So, but today we are not going to burn ourselves like this. That's it. Right, so now we have a composite signal coming out of the RF connector and the RF signal was coming from the board up to there but uh, we cut it, right? And uh, where does the composite signal come from? Well, uh, this is the graphic chip and uh, it's called a VIC2, V-I-C-2 and this has all the graphic signals coming. And there are some um, uh, signal mixing here to get the composite. I don't. I'm not completely sure if you can remove this board and uh, get the composite signal. Let's look at the schematic for that. Right. So here we have the RF modulator, and you can see here we have color in, color input. A luminosity input, so color input is like the color of the pixels in uh, an analog value coming from the MIC chip and the graphic chip and so does the luminosity, that's like the, how bright it is so this is like black and white signals or, or grayscale signal what's coming out is the same signal, you see, it passes through the transistor here and it's amplified you have uh, down here is the um, luminosity input. It's also coming out here. Uh, this signal here, color in to this transistor and out. But also it goes down here and it's uh, fed through a capacitor. And you know, capacitors let uh, high frequency signals pass. And this is a high frequency signal and it is mixed in here with a luminosity signal and therefore you get composite composite signal right so what this is the signal that we have soldered to our connector now and um, here you can see down here 
uh, up down here we did cut this uh, wire here actually and we have drawn uh, the composite out to here yeah and there there's another point here as you can see this is the modulator and we want the composite signal and there's no composite signal coming out of the big chip so we need the we need some uh, mixing here to get the composite signal. We can't just remove the modulator. That's the point here. And now I want to show you some pictures of uh, from yesterday when I picked it out, and uh, you can see the uh, how clean it got inside. And the reason for cleaning it was uh, to preserve it, but also I wanted it to um, not just to look nice, of course, but to be able to find the leaks from capacitors that we have around here we have uh, actually not that many on this board the um, original the breadboard uh, or the <laughs> not the breadboard but the bread box or they had uh, many capacitors this one doesn't have that many so we have one here and I have looked in this area and I can't find any corrosion what you are looking for are uh, uh, pins that are turning green or not, and before they turn green, or is it after? I don't know. Uh, they turn grey, and they look corroded. Uh, actually, you, how you see it? If you don't have anything to refer to, you will see that some of the pins are not the same uh, shininess, <laughs> or um, some pins look uh, nice and others look more grey now, and that might be a sign of uh, corrosion. So I've looked around here and around this capacitor and couldn't find any, so yeah. But anyway, we need to I need to replace those, so um, yeah. So that's it. So what I'm going to do now, I don't have any games or any uh, programs. Well, I did find a cassette. And uh, it was like a message from 15 years ago. <laughs> so on this cassette there was just a basic program. I don't think I want to show you. Uh, it was just uh, yeah. yeah, teenage stuff or late teenage stuff, 20 stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing before I close this video, what I see here, this they have been socketed. And so also this uh, safe chip has been socketed and I don't think uh, um, they usually do that when they produce this board. So then I turned it around and I can show you just uh, quickly. Okay, there's one more. And never use uh, force when you try to remove the board because <laughs> there might be more screws and they are totally screwed. Right, that's what I'm talking about. So, right, so what you can see here is week 21, 1986. Here also on the VIC chip. Right, but the socket ones, uh, they say 1989. So, anyway, and then there's the the sound chip, the SID chip, to say is 88. Right, and uh, there's something I notice here. I no, don't know if you can see it. This is uh, the CIA chips I was talking about. This one's right here. So, this is uh, sloppy work. So technician, sorry, I'm not going to blame anyone here, but uh, when you do a repair job, please always clean away flux. Thankfully, this flux hasn't been any uh, damage. I haven't done any damage to the board. What can happen if you, you trap moisture in there? You can uh, get corrosion. Anyway, you can get um, corrosion. Uh, under the flux, so uh, what you do is you use rubbing alcohol, like uh, isopropanol alcohol, and you just use a brush, anti-static brush, and uh, 
until it goes away and you wipe it off. You can use a Q-tip also. Yeah, and the other chip, the the SID chip that we have here, right there. Let's see if we turn it around. It has also been changed. They put on a socket there. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, it's not that easy to see, but I haven't used much solder there. It's like uh, some of the pins are almost dry. So, yeah. Well, it works, and uh, that's what counts, I guess. Um, the worst part is when you get corrosion. And also, you can see here. You can see uh, that it could also be me trying to remove that uh, RF. Uh, RF box. Yeah, so it has been repaired a couple of times, and uh, but I have always been the owner of this, so I know the history. Of it. It's not like a someone someone has used it for parts or changed components with me, without me knowing. Yeah, but it was interesting though to notice these numbers because. <coughs> When I was a kid I didn't know what the hell they were doing with the board when they fixed it. Just fix it for me. Like. And uh, Yeah, and it works. It didn't work. Fix it. It worked. And uh, now I don't understand more. Yeah, hope you liked the video. I'm going to put this thing together. And, uh, soon I will get one of those fancy... Um, yeah. Where are the screws on this?